New York, originally from Queens. Yeah, I'm super inspired by your story and um, saw you on uh, Vice Hustle, started following you. Yeah. Kind of yeah. found that we had some like mutual things going on, which is really cool. Um, small oh, really? world, New York. Such as? What's so, mutuals? So um, one of the interns from your investment firm, uh, what's it called? Harlem Capital. Harlem Capital, yeah. One of the interns, I'm actually friends with him. His name is... Um... Is it Anthony De La Rosa? Yeah, it is Anthony. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, How'd you know uh, that? Oh, wait. I, I didn't know that. I took a guess because uh, for some reason, the the number one guy th that I get people say like, oh, yeah, yeah, I was connected to someone at HCP, um, ends up being ADLR. So look at that. That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how I know him as. So I was like, yeah, what's his real name? <laughs> 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 but yeah, um, he's a really cool dude. He's a really cool dude. So, well, would love to part. um would love to get some background on you. Um, would I'd love to hear where where are you from? Where are you born and raised? What's your journey been like to get to where you are now? And then a little bit about what you're kind of what you're doing now and where you're looking to take it. Yeah, for sure. I'm a digital marketer. Um, started off like making eleven dollars. I'm from here in New York, Long Island. Mm -hmm. Um, started off uh working at a print shop at like eleven dollars an hour uh kind of scrummaged my way into this field of digital marketing five years ago um worked for pennies as an internship at like 26 um and then just worked my way up managing enterprise level accounts at a, a local paid advertising firm and then from there i actually started working with damon john from abc shark tank mm -hmm. also rose up the ranks and kind of just got bored hit a ceiling while I was working there, I was freelancing, sharpening my skill sets as a as a paid media manager. Um, but realized I just wasn't good with like uh, building a business. You know, the, the, that's the hard part of it, the, like logistics of it. I was focusing a lot on uh, tactics and learning. Um, so now I'm trying to build an agency and freelancing on my own, trying to get out of um, freelance and transition into more owner. And it takes time um and that's that's kind of it in a nutshell so i i was curious like from from your end um to get your perspective on that i mean there's so many different ways to go about it and right now i'm kind of just starting from the ground up i, I mean i have a couple of clients create case studies already but i'm just doing just just hustling doing like a uh, free work for people and like building out contracts so that after a month you know like boom, here's my management fee from there. And just honestly, at the end of the day, just looking to do good work and empower entrepreneurs um, in the e-commerce space. Um, so I was curious, like on your perspective on that and, and understanding maybe like ways in uh, networking in the sense of building genuine relationships and connections, because I actually really hate networking. Um, Me and you both. Yeah, uh, yeah. So that's it in a nutshell. And I'm talking really fast because I'm so hyped to talk to you. And uh, this is really cool. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Now that's super helpful. Uh, give me a better sense for like where you like to fit in with respect to like, you know, your skill set, right? Like you work with, with Damon John and all this other stuff. And then you kind of found your groove freelancing a little bit. Um, what's your sweet spot? Like whom are you helping do what exactly? Um, and like, yeah. where do you shine the most? Yeah, so I hit some really great success for my client that I've been with since I was working with Damon. Um, started, he's an e-commerce business specifically with a niche of ballistic helmets. It's a weird niche. Um, but started working with him from, he was making like 80K per month. We scaled that all the way up to last month, right under 800K on track for a six mil. Um, at the end of the year. So that caught me, that got me really hyped and that created this really great case study. And I was like, I love working with entrepreneurs like him. Um, and I found myself working with other entrepreneurs within the e-commerce space. It's like a different mindset anyways. And I also want to build my own e-commerce store. Mm -hmm. um, so I am working specifically with e-commerce entrepreneurs in a nutshell, yeah. And what, what stage, like a super early stage or like a little bit more mature? 
Um, it looks as though like I'm kind of somewhere in, in the middle, like like all throughout the spectrum. I'm working with a, an entrepreneur that um, probably like in terms of revenue making 10K per month and slowly scaling that. It's just like inventory issues right now. And I'm working with another entrepreneur who, uh, making um, between 100 to 200K with scanning desks. Um, which is really cool, really cool uh, product. Mm -hmm. And my main client, which I take like a percentage of spend, I'm spending a lot, all the way up to 800K per month. So it's like really ranges. And I feel like the revenue kind of like dictates where they're at in terms of mm -hmm. scaling and growing and foundational stuff. So mm -hmm. um, oh, that's yeah. cool. And, and um, I guess like, they bring you in and do what exact just so i have a better sense because it's like a broad term so some people mm -hmm. are like beasts on facebook ads some people um like just put the right team together or some are more create like uh handle the creative so where do you kind of fall into that yeah good question um i didn't specify that so paid media so facebook ads i'm a beast at google ads which comprises of youtube advertising and display network stuff um and i'm actually dipping into i mean i've done pinterest ads already but i'm dipping more aggressively because it works really well for e-commerce businesses snapchat mm -hmm. that's like a scaling tool mm -hmm. um and also like i've done linkedin in the past but that doesn't do too well for e-commerce mm -hmm. i agree mostly for lead gen or b2b but yeah, that's really what I, I mean, I've done like a little bit of everything and that's, this is where I found my bread and butter and where I shine and it's just like where my skill sets have compounded into. So it worked mm. out pretty perfectly, yeah. Mm. Um, and then lastly, before I dig in, um, so you said that you're like freelancing now and you're, you're looking more to like anchor in and like build a, a core shop and like have team and kind of staff up, is that right? Can you, can you share with me, like in a year or two, if you see this thing working, like, what does it look like? Yeah. Good question. Um, so I'm seeing this, like I'm, I'm starting from freelancer to actually like business owner in the sense that I do have, um, go to freelancers at least, and maybe like have one person in house. I really like the remote aspect of things. I've always been a big proponent of it, which is why I really like working with e-commerce businesses, like online businesses. Um, I see this as, um, like I said, working with like having go to freelancers and maybe like some sort of collective. I'm already doing that to an extent. And then having one main person like work with me, like where they're handling most of the media buying or it's like 50, 50. So I could be more client facing and just sign on clients and develop relationships. Cause I find I really like that part and maybe, um, bring another person for in creatives, just specifically creatives and just keep it boutique as fuck, you know, just like high touch, high intimacy, um, eventually getting to a point where we're charging a good amount, but like what's key for me, at least right now is the results and the quality more than anything. Um, I've worked in agencies in the past, so uh, I don't want to like offload it onto a junior and like, I don't, I want to like just shit on all agency kind of practices in a way, <laughs> like just revolutionize that. Cause I, I hate it so much. I hated working at an agency. I love the people, how smart yeah. they were and how fat it's trash. It's absolutely trash. Yeah. Um, and I, it's just like not fair for the the client and it's also not as fun because like what i love now is like having a real relationship with my client like we're like we can be amigos you know like we, we can be cool and also it's like um we're also i'm also working aggressively and super hard on their account it's just like that having that high touch is high touch high intimacy high trust is super big especially when you're managing money and this is food that can feed their kids you know so yeah. Yeah. No, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, it's great to meet you. It's great to, uh, I know we've been connected. I see, I definitely see your name float around. Um, <laughs> and so I, I know we've been oh. connected. So, <laughs> so thank you. And I'm glad we made the time. And no, yeah, it sounds you. like, I mean, it sounds like you're in a exciting and kind of, you know, fun space where you get to it, this COVID window is also, it's been a time of transition for a lot of people in a lot of different ways. And it's been a good, time to wait i'm sorry wait once quick second I'm yeah no problem the door.
All right. Funny because I, I do not live with my mom, but she lives nearby. So she <laughs> she is known to occasionally dun, 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 just like bang on the door and yeah, my my uh, I actually like downsized heavily and moved in with my grandparents like two years ago. Good for you. Um, I think it's like a year and a half. Just just like straight up hustle. Even when I was working with Damon and I was racking in money, I was just using it to rack so I can Good save up you. whatever. That's, that's I use correct. yeah the guests. So this is like the guest room. I'm like renovating it into my office, and my grandma just popped in and dropped in an egg because she oh, thinks funny. I'll die if I don't eat for yeah, five seconds. Yeah. 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 Same, same yeah. situation. Um, Feel you. Feel you. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, you're in an exciting place um, and, you know, and the most important decision that you can make with respect to pivoting into this building your own boutique shop is that you want to build your own boutique shop. And that sounds simple, but like a lot of times people gradually ease into it and never make the intentional decision that they want to do it. They just kind of like bring on some of the help to help them. And before they know it, they find themselves in a situation where they are running a boutique agency. They have the overhead, um, but they never maybe really carefully evaluated the decision to know if that was something that brings them joy or that they wanted to do or whatever. So, in, and I see that a lot. Um, and that's happened to me before as well, where I just, stumble into a project and before you know it's got a life of its own and it becomes difficult to walk away from in a weird way um but what i like about this situation is that you are intentionally making up your mind and saying this is what i want to do uh you know not not that like hey i want to help e-commerce businesses but specifically this is how i want to set up my shop to be and you have clarity around that you want to be boutique and that may change as time goes on, but you want to be boutique. You want to be high touch. You want to buck um, agency practices. And so, so already what I'm getting here are uh, some of the more important aspects of business building, which are, is not as often talked about because it's like softer slash more intangible. But to me, it's the most important considerations, which is, it's the cultural, it's the values that you're looking to build. It's the culture that you're looking to build. And when you go out there and, you know, bring talent on, some of which are people that you already that you already know, some of which will be newer people or whatever. Um, what you will have to do as CEO primarily is take care to um, take care to protect those values and that mission and that vision. Um, that's what you're going to have to be the fervent gatekeeper of because there are, you know, just because of like the last five years, there was like a boom in, in, uh, people entering into digital, um, advertising and marketing or Ty Lopez doing the fucking SSM um, and all that type, type of stuff, which, you know, even with the influx, there still will be opportunity for everyone. And then some, but all that to say that the skill set. Uh, like the hard skills have been commoditized in that you can find people to do the work um, harder to find the people to do the work well. But what I want you to get in the mindset of is, is hiring for that hunger and hiring for those values versus hiring for the resume or the, you know, the talent. And my sense of you is that you're someone that would do that organically anyway. Like, um, you know, you're going to hire someone that you fuck with versus hiring someone that like just doesn't mesh with you. But just so that it's intentionally and explicitly stated, what we're looking to do and what will make the organization work top to bottom is bringing on people that embody those values. And as and then as a result, one thing that I realized when I was growing my first business is that I'm, I'm so clearly who I am that um, when I first brought on my first employees, like they picked up a lot of who I am by osmosis. Um, but I had a customer call me and say, John, who the fuck do you have working your account accounts and your customer service? And she's like, you're losing money because I don't even like dealing with them, but I'll deal with them because I deal with you. And that's when I realized like that was my first time ever having employees and also realizing that you have to be intentional about your intake process. Like I thought just because they were around me often enough banging down phones and doing what they I do, cool. like, yeah. they were going to pick some of that stuff up. But like I, it took that 
like jarring moment to realize, okay, I got to craft explicitly and intentionally what my values are, what's the value of the, of the firm, you know, what do we, you know, that kind of stuff, which is like that cheesy corporate stuff. But there's a reason why McDonald's does it. And like McDonald's knows a thing or two about building culture and, and you know, building HR at scale, let's right. say Apple too and stuff like that. So, so I took the moment and the, and the time to craft out like, okay, go the extra mile, whatever it was. Like I, I mined within for within myself for what those values that I led with were. And you're having the advantage that you're, you can do that ahead of hiring. So that when you bring people on, mm -hmm. you literally hand them a document that's branded that has your, you know, like literally hand them that doc that says like, hey, this is what we live and breathe. You know, these are not um, just like sayings like we, we, we do this, like this is who we are, right? So, so first I'm starting there. Um, and then I would like to even maybe proceed and go back one step and say, the tactic is how you do something and the strategy is the what. So we already know that we're going to service clients and we're going to do that via um, an agency, but the brand is the why. And, and I would implore you, especially in a space where there is um, a lot of it is commoditized. Oh, People so feel like, yeah, yeah, you know, it's another agency. I would really implore you to think about uh, your deepest why. Um, and that's not so much coming up with something that you don't already know as much as it is chipping away that which you know and distilling it down to a very uh, powerful why. For example, like when I first joined um, Harlem Capital, the guys there, like they were like, well, our mission is to opportunistically invest in underrepresented founders and generate returns for our investors. And I was like, oh, man. You know, cut that down. Uh, you know, <laughs> that's just like every other firm, you know, and then my kind of like what I bring to the table is like, I can just like build, humanize it because like logic and meeting people here with the number and stuff like that, like yeah. that will drive some of the decision-making, but the brands that build depth, you know, just have like an emotionally resonant piece. So we change that to change the face of entrepreneurship, you know, investing mm. in a thousand diverse founders over 20 years it became something that people could rally around. And we found people that had no interest at all in venture capital or financing or whatever. Like we built momentum and community around it and it became a movement. Um, right. And that's what allowed us to enter the culture in a way that like no other firm that I've seen so far has been able to do. Um, mm -hmm. And that was largely because we activated the why and we led with the why. So so we can dig into tactical stuff, but I guess before I did, I wanted to hit on that because that to me actually are some of the most important things. It's like digging deep and, and that will take time and you will get frustrated because you will have to distill it into like a clear, powerful line that you feel is, is authentically you. So that will mm -hmm. take rolling a J, taking a walk, drinking a beer, going back and yeah. forth. And, you know, and I'm here to be a sounding board for you as well, if you need that, but when you distill that vision and that why, and then you can diffuse that into certain value values. Now we're set to bring people on because the clearer they see the North star, the more clearly you can have people pu pulling in that same direction. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's a strong positioning statement too, you know, super strong. And it's funny because this is what you help clients with too. Right. Yeah. Um, you're yeah. just doing that for yourself now. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It's harder for to do it for yourself than to do it for others. Yeah, it's like a doctor can't like surgically remove their own kidney. You know, <laughs> it's, it's kind of tough. <laughs> Facts. Pretty crude. <laughs> eloquently put. Uh, no, but, but, but yeah. So, so that's you know that's how that's where I would start, and uh, that's where I would put a lot of energy into that, putting some of that lift up front, um, and then from there, you know, a lot of the shit mechanically is going to run pretty similar, to, pretty similarly to your freelance business. Like what I've found in building like my content team, for example, is, um, uh, you know, it's finding that sweet spot of like, okay, you know, you got to build your revenue before you can 
get people work, work. but then you got to give them work. But then it's a catch 22 because like they got to have enough work where they can stick around. So like just kind of having that, having that um sweet spot is going to be key, which to me, that's where the why can really help patch that. So for instance, the, the people that work on my content efforts, you know, I have, um, I have a designer, I have a guy that annotates and does my quotes. I have a, a team captain. Um, and, you know, all of them, no exception, you know, are just passionate about what I'm about. And, you know, they've consumed my stuff for as long as they have. And so I, I get the benefit of having some of that brand. But um, as a result, though, <coughs> it turned into, wait, excuse me. <coughs> You're right. Yeah. It turns into actual like <clears throat> business advantages um, in terms of like hiring, what you pay out, how much people are willing to work for how much work you, you have set aside for them. So yeah. all that to say is that the why, although it's like grossly underrated, is a lot of what ends up being the glue for the organization, especially when it's small. And you have 100%. but a few people and you have but a few clients and you have the advantage that you're going to be bringing some clients into the mix. So you'll have some revenue to kickstart you, but then you'll see it'll be hard to like get a few people doing a few different things and, and prioritize you enough to do the work, but also be okay with kind of getting paid a little bit less mm -hmm. and, but growing with you, mm -hmm. that will be much easier when you have that really resonant why and like, mm -hmm. and you're, you're fostering a community that they just like, they just love working with each other and working with you mm -hmm. and having that like early forgiveness almost in a way from that early team members, those are, mm -hmm. uh, is what ends up being the nucleus that allows you to get enough clients and grow that thing much bigger. And mm -hmm. the first people that must be rewarded are them. You know, they end up being rewarded with a little bit more pay and they get to a little bit more of a stable place. And you'll see that you'll continually kind of take a haircut on your own personal earnings, which it sounds like you're in a position where you're ready and willing to do that because Absolutely. instead of paying yourself bigger funds, you'll just create another role that helps the whole system kind of you know, move a little bit more freely and it, it's the oil in the machine yeah. and little by little, you know, the thing starts to work. Um, yeah. So it's just, I'm seeing super long term. I'm, I'm in it for the next five years. It's not something that I want to build out tomorrow. And I kind of, it's interesting that you said this because I kind of started finding myself like falling into this trap, like already into a boutique agency, which, but I like stopped it because it was like, is that's even what I want? You know, like this mm. is, and then I'm just like, damn, I got to be intentional about this and like mm. actually do it correctly because, you know, I'm thinking about all my past experience at all the shitty agencies that I stepped foot into. And they're just like, clearly, like, I don't want to be like that. You know, I, I don't want to have a bad culture. Like, I don't want to, the bad culture all resonate. It's like, it, it's rotten from the, from the core, you know? So I completely agree. And I think that's even more incentive. Like I have had incentive before, but I just got to cut, kind of got, got, stuck in my head mm -hmm. to create content because I haven't clearly defined that positioning and that why. And mm -hmm. it's like, why does it even matter? Like, what is it like, like you were saying, like, there's so many marketers out there to the point where it pisses me off, like, you know, like, like, cool, do your thing. But it's just like, why put out content unless it's something bigger for more impact, you know? So mm -hmm. when I think in the sense that like, oh, this is a great way to build a tribe, a community mm -hmm. of people, more than just fans of like people that are actually about it and we could do this together mm -hmm. and maybe we will work together. Like that just revs me up. Like that's way more incentive. And in fact, like I even get caught in my head of like, damn, who the fuck am I to like be a CEO or whatever? Like I'm just, I'm just saying, like, I'm just, I'm just like regular schmegular, like out here crushing some ads here and there or whatever. Um, so like, to, it, it just like, I don't have to be stuck through that lens. I'm like, I could just like reframe it. Like, Oh, I'm doing good. I'm helping people. We're helping together. I'm not, I don't have to be in like, Oh, I gotta be a boss now. Like, right. Right. I'm just like, right. nah, I'm just having a good time. We're just all having a good time together. We're just ambitious Hunt. people connecting. 100%. And, you know, you'll go back and forth and you'll judge yourself and 
you know, it's just the nature of this thing that is rather unnatural of like capturing yourself and sharing like that has become the norm. But like it's unnatural to who we are in a sense. I mean, I don't know, maybe not because, you know, there's always been that kind of outlet in society. But all that to say that I completely agree with you. And, and that's personally how I am comfortable doing what I do, because it's a lot right. fucking easier to do this without having to share who I am. And, and like, there's, that's, there's a reason most of the people in business, like don't take on the tax because that's what it is. It's a tax to be yeah. out there sharing your business and shit like that. Like most of these guys would rather just get rich in silence, you know, because it's just less scrutiny and you keep the flies away. And like, yeah, it's uncomfortable for me to share when I, you know, took a fucking massive L on a commercial real estate project and I happened to be rolling and I shared it or I made it on, you know, my show Hustle and Vice, like episode one, my deal falling apart. I was real. I, I wouldn't even plan for that to be on the show. The producer was just like, hey, what's going on? I was like, hey, I'm just doing it. And he was like, roll, roll, roll. And it just, you know, and I had to make it's a amazing. tough decision. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's put it on there because that's what that's what it is. But all that to say that yes you know it has its own tax but you know to to see the to see the value that it's been able to bring some people in varying different capacities mm -hmm. you know is so cool because man it means different things to different people but to have even a small part to play in it vastly outweighs you know that and it makes me actually feel selfish that i'm like i was like man I actually let my own, I was going to let my own security about what people would think about what I had to do or how, or how I was coming across my own insecurities about myself. Mm -hmm. I almost let that stifle a message that has now taken on a, a life of its own. Yeah. That you really know? inspires me. That's crazy. Cause, cause I mean, it's moments like that. I'll see it. I'll see you on your content and I'm like, all right. I can do it. Like, I, I don't see Like, I don't see a difference between him and I, you know? So, 100%. I, so I'm just like, damn, when I accomplish something, who's the next, like Cynthia growing up in a project, like who's the next one that I'm going to inspire to the same, like empowerment, you know? Like, so I, I do also feel like, man, I should, but it's like all those insecurities and all of the, yeah, yeah, yeah all the like, scarcity mindset and, you yeah. know all this shell of trauma and bullshit that comes with being dirt <laughs> poor <laughs> you know <laughs> growing up in the hood so yeah uh, it's a I lot of it and on and, a spiritual you know, level <laughs> no and i'm glad it resonates and you know take your time with it, it really you'll ease into it um but you know just know that it also <laughs> plays its part in helping you grow your business too and that's been the yeah. cool fun thing like the full circle thing where it's like man you, you know you sow you sow you sow you're not meant to sow and harvest in the same season and you know not every crop Bars. looks the same um, yeah. but you know as you go on you know your ability to sow becomes greater and then your you know your reapings become greater and you know it's become very evident to me in these sessions being 200 in and speaking with people all over for oh my, oh my gosh like some people i'll I, some people that i did my session earlier with i already went on and we're buying a building together literally uh, so, yes, <laughs> I, I had a building. I had I have a building that I'm buying, and I reached out to him, and because he said, "Hey, keep me in mind," and I said, "Hey, would you want?" Absolutely, you know. And we talked it through, and we're, that's happening. You know, some folks like, oh my gosh, it just it runs the gamut, and um, it really is. Uh, if it's so, if it speaks to you, this whole thing, um, it's something that I think that there's nothing but upside um at the end of the day for so i'm very excited for you i would be encouraged i would be optimistic whether or not you decided to take on the content thing like nurturing a tribe and community will be key um to an org to a small organization that you know needs a, a glue to hold them together you are going to be that glue your job is to be the the vision keeper you hold that vision near and dear to your heart you make sure it's clear in every touch point as you speak with customers every time you have your team speak together and all this other stuff and um that glue goes a long way it goes longer than them making an extra five bucks an hour mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. that glue is what gets people to stick around and then they grow as people and you guys all grow together so um so yeah i'm excited for you i want to make myself available to you you know that email that i sent you to book me that's my actual um 
you know, uh, email. You can hit me anytime. Thank you. Yeah, um, appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, absolutely. This has been a pleasure, and I wish you a great weekend. Um, I hope you can <laughs> Likewise. find a pocket of time to relax and, or do whatever. Um, but oh, yeah, no. con consider okay. consider us connected. Hit me up. Thank you. And if you know anyone, like any hungry e-com entrepreneurs, I'm happy to help them. That's great. That's great. And and as I have e-com needs, by the way, I will circle back with you as well. Yeah. Snapchat's great. <laughs> I The call before this, by the way, yeah. literally was the head of Snapchat Originals, oh, whom, shit. whom got on my schedule so that he could pitch me the idea of potentially doing an original on Snap, which is his, they have a lot. That's in, insane. A, yeah, a Will lot Smith. Of stuff in store. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, just a heads up there. So, but yeah. That's sick. That's yeah. awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I'm I'm happy to be connected. I'm so grateful that you're doing the, these things. It's amazing. Thank you. Keep, keep on keeping on. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Great to meet and hit me up anytime and um, talk soon. Awesome. Thank you. Cheers. Peace.